Hello everyone, welcome back to Beyond the Veil Tarot and Astrology. My name is Candice Marie. Thanks for joining me. I'll be your astrologer today. Happy Tuesday, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. Back at it with another video, and today we're going to be touching on the transit of the Sun and Aries conjunct the North Node. Really interesting stuff we're going to take a look at today. If you guys like this content and you want to see more of it, make sure you click the bell button below. Subscribe to the channel, it helps the channel grow and it alerts you when we have new videos. Um, and don't forget to like, comment and share. Give me a thumbs up and let me know where this is taking place in your chart or are you born with the sun conjunct the north node aspect? I'd love to hear. All right, well, happy April. Hopefully your guys' Mercury retrograde is off to a great start. I'm gonna have fingers crossed. We have no issues with this video. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about this aspect today because it's going to be setting up over the next couple of days. So you're going to be feeling the conjunction anywhere from April 2nd today through the 5th of April, 2024. Um, so we've got an exalted sun in conjunction to the North node. So if you guys notice here, the sun is within two degrees of an orb today. So you're starting to feel that energy picking up. Uh, it's going to be at 15 degrees of um, Aries. So if you have any personal placements between 14 and 16 degrees, this is an important time to pay attention to what the universe is trying to tell you. It'll be taking place at 15 degrees, which is a Gemini degree. Now, maybe you guys have noticed in my recent videos about the month of April, I talk a lot about affirmations using the phrase, I am, I am strong, I am capable, I am independent, I am healthy. Um, but the reason why I think that this is so important is primarily because this 15 degrees of Aries keeps getting brought up over and over again. So let's see what Nicola has to say about the 15 degrees in uh, degree astrology. So even though it's in Aries, um, it's taking place at this 13. So it's going to give it a flavor of Gemini. Now the Gemini degrees are 3, 15 and 27. And whenever we see these degrees, it references to write uh, using pencils, notebooks, stationery, paper, things that involve traffic, streets, all means of transportations, um, whether this is short trips, crossroads, bus stops, drivers, mechanics, or bridges, newspaper, press journalists, magazines, newsstand, books, or bookstores, a conversation, communication on things like the telephone, internet, letters, an envelope, a stamp, or the post office, having a chat with someone, mutual understanding, educated people, intellectuals, literature, writers, and to learn, uh, shop assistants, store, commerce, merchants, and trade, because that's what Mercury presides over, announcers on radio or television networks, uh, corridors, staircases, balconies, fences, gates, uh, neighborhood, neighbors from a neighborhood, personal documents like your ID cards, passports, driver's license, or visas, to be a matchmaker, to get in touch through someone, whether it's by letter or internet, language to translate, translate or interpreter, children, kindergarten, elementary schools, in an elementary school, double to a couple because Gemini is a double-bodied sign, um, names, nicknames, or twins, brother, sister, with a brother, with a sister, okay? So I preface using this just so you guys ha might have more context. I found that like with Gemini degrees, um, sometimes things come in twos, so you'll get the message twice, or you'll hear something more than one time, or maybe it's something that you kind of have to repeat. That's the other way that I could look at it. And as we start to see this conjunction taking place, um, it's basically the sun highlighting the North Node, okay? So in astrology, the North Node really talks about a lot about what the future holds, what's strange, unusual, mystical, magical. Um, it has this connection to, you know, where we kind of tap into soul growth. So even if you don't have any personal placements in Aries, this particular conjunction is extra potent um, because it is giving you, or I guess, shining a light on where there is room to initiate or start something new. Now, I think this is also extra helpful because we're doing, you know, we're experiencing this transit right in the midst of the beginning of the Mercury retrograde. You guys are going to feel so much like the first half of April is about kind of getting yourself in order or um, feeling like you have better goals or better organization, new habits, new things that you're starting. 
So the Sun conjunction to the North Node may be giving us a little bit of insight as to um, you know, what we're supposed to be doing, what our goals are. The Sun is exalted in Aries, which means it performs extremely well. It's gonna be kind of showing both the traits of Aries kind of entrepreneurial, go-getting, pioneering energy in connection with the North Node, which means kind of creating your own destiny, right? Uh, bringing your own luck and showcasing or showing your natural talents. Now, um, I wanna remind you guys also that Mercury will station at this degree. So when we saw the Mercury retrograde shadow begin last month, it entered shadow at 15 degrees. So it looks like that was taking place. Let's look. That was taking place right around here. So right around March 18th, okay? So we were kind of coming into the shadow. So we were already kind of thinking about what do I want to personally change? What new things am I doing? You know, Aries can be about athletics. It can be about independence. It can be about being more assertive. Um, it may also be where we were tapping into that inner knowing um, of what we're supposed to be working on on a personal level. And when that happened, it was also in opposition to the South Node in Libra. So the South Node in Libra can show us where, you know, we're breaking away from certain relationships, right? The South Node represents kind of karmic releasing, uh, where we're not seeing eye to eye in terms of communications with other people. Uh, maybe we're realizing that we are too people pleasing or, you know, we're focusing too much on what other people think or we're trying to keep the peace. Maybe we're being indecisive. So that North Node Mercury conjunction is a lot more of, well, what do I think? What do I know, right? What do I believe in? What do I have to say? How am I communicating with other people? Um, so obviously when that North Node conjunction happens, it can create some relationship disruption. So that's why we've seen some friction kind of in the skies. So if we take a look at um, this particular conjunction that's setting up now, you know, I really feel like this is the, the period where we're actually going to start feeling kind of like the sparkles of this incoming solar eclipse in Aries on the 8th. So as soon as that sun starts coming into conjunction with the North Node, even though it happens on the, um, the 8th, we start feeling the effects of it like now. So the next two days, you're going you're gonna to start seeing where certain people are kind of like showing up and being more Aries-like. They're being more brave, right? They're being more independent. They're taking action. They're also focusing a lot on their own path. Now, um, we will see Mercury retrograde back to this degree. So um, when the Mercury retrograde ends in April, Mercury will be conjunct this degree again. So it's going to keep coming up over and over. Um, so I want to read to you guys again, and I've read it, so, I've read it several times, so I apologize. Um, I'm going to read it to you again. And I thought it'd be interesting just to kind of shake it up a little bit. You know, with, um, with the Sabian symbols, we always round up. So if we see 15 degrees, we read 16 degrees. So I'll read it to you. But I think it's interesting that the conjunction, you know, the Mercury retrograde is retrograding back to 15. Um, so I want to read you guys both 15 and 16, and they should kind of complement or build on each other. So this uh, particular degree of Aries 15, um, an Indian weaving a blanket. The key word is diligence. The theme is active participation. The symbol speaks to pride and personal fulfillment as achieved through creative self-expression. The image of an Indian weaving a, bl weaving a blanket focuses on preservation of cultural values and traditions through art. At the same time, it depicts the pleasure and satisfaction an individual can experience through meeting the needs of others. The symbol is similar to the meaning of the Eight of Pentacles in the Rider Waite Tarot, that it expresses the pride of a skilled craftsman who is able to artistically express himself and his values through work in some tangible manner, and at the same time produce goods that meet the basic human that meet the basic need in human society. In this symbol, the weaver is creating something that will provide protection from the elements as well as express his skills as an artist. The figure of the weaver also reflect, reflects patience and concentration. As such, it symbolizes the stability and peace of mind that an individual can achieve through being an active and contributing member to society that sustains him. In modern terms, this is called being a part of the process. At its highest, it represents self-fulfillment, enjoyment through opportunities, use of personal skills and talents for the benefit of others. Watch for insecurity and a willingness to live a dull and predictable life rather than face the uncertainties of commitment. 
Um, the accent is on ethnicity, pride, and workmanship, um, and creative self-expression. It's a good time for visiting museums or taking an art class, delving into the history of traditions of different cultures, or working on your own personal project. Your greatest advantage lies in putting your talents to practical use for the benefit of others. Go for the conventional or traditional rather than innovative or fancy. Fill a need in a warm heart. Okay. Guard against uh, oversensitivity or letting your work become convenient excuse for avoiding social relationships and involvements. So like I said, it's, it's conjunct this degree, but Mercury's retrograding. And I love that it talks about your personal talents, putting it to use, finding ways to be able to show that, you know, to the collective and your personal participation. Uh, pretty bang on with the, the sun because the sun talks about our joy, it talks about our talent, you know, our creative abilities. And the North Node talks about what it could become. So maybe, you know, I, I look at this as kind of like, I think a lot of people are asking themselves, you know, like what personal talents do I possess? How could I potentially become more self-sufficient? A lot of people are kind of talking nowadays about, you know, side hustles, personal businesses, opening up, you know, their own websites, their own social media. Um, they are teaching something or they're deciding that they want to become some kind of like a coach of some sort. These are all kind of Aries themes um, so I love that the sun is really highlighting, okay, here's what we're good at. And then we use the Mercury retrograde to go, well, how do I get that going? How do I initiate this thing, right? All right, so this is 16 degrees of Aries. You guys have heard this. Um, it's brownies dancing in the setting sun. The dance of life, the symbol speaks to getting back to the raw, unrefined, and natural source of things for clarification, understanding, and self-renewal. The image of brownies dancing in the setting sun depicts the nature spirits reliving just before it turns, to ni- it turns to night when symbolically their source of life goes home and returns to its source. In a very real sense, the image depicts the celebration of life and the end of a cycle and honoring whenever the cycle is signified. But it also depicts the eagerness to move on to the next cycle. So it alludes to transitions or to a point where old gives way to the new end in the beginning are one. Here is the implication of naive optimism and willingness to face the unknown. The symbol also impl- implies rejuvenation in the form of getting back to nature in a physical source of life. It illustrates not only the friendly relationship between man and his universe, but the indestructible link or bond between any source and its progeny. On a practical level, the symbol can apply to an Irish wake, a bachelor party, a graduation dance, retirement dinner, Uh, rituals and celebrations at its positive its highest symbol represents rich and rewarding life with a result of appreciating and accepting new opportunities for growth so the accent is on celebrating endings and beginnings and the natural cycles of life so i love i love how i mean you know the retrograde literally is about re-evaluating some kind of cycle you know aries is about initiating something new We've got Mars, which is the dispositor of all of this energy because Aries is ruled by Mars um, and it's in Pisces, okay? And it's approaching Saturn, which I really feel like on one hand, it talks a lot about on a personal level, we are reevaluating our boundaries, what's holding us back, what we're afraid of, uh, where we are not actually kind of getting on the path and doing what needs to be done um, for ourselves personally. Um, And Pisces is invisible. So some of us might feel like I'm not getting enough sleep, right? Mars, Saturn, I'm not sleeping well, so I'm not really kind of starting my day off well. Um, We may feel like we are afraid to initiate new cycles. Some of us are living in the past. Certainly, um, I think the positive way of looking at this is that if we are willing to close and kind of honor things and how things have completed, it's creating that new space for something brand new. So I'm hearing a lot of things during eclipse season with people that are like, I lost my job, my relationship is ending, I am having to relocate, I'm being evicted. Yeah, all really heavy things, right? And that could be the Mars-Saturn influence of these setbacks, these, you know, um, limitations, these challenges. Saturn is a hill, right? It's about an incline. It's like the goat. Um, So many of us are feeling like, you know, we're tired and we're just treading uphill. We don't know if we're going to be able to make it. One thing I can tell you guys is creating this new beginning is only going to be possible if we kind of close chapters. Um, So what better time than eclipse season to close these chapters? I think that there can be a way of honoring and releasing and letting go of stuff 
And we may feel like we're in limbo right now because we're in between eclipses. So a lot of you guys are still kind of reeling off of that dramatic lunar eclipse in Libra we had at the end of March. And now we are getting ready for this new beginning. Um, the other way of looking at this is that Pisces is inherently spiritual, right? It rules places like churches, churches, temples, religious centers, uh, places of worship, uh, but also like, um, you know, retreat centers, being out and alone in nature, things connected to other realms, other worlds. And it can very much mean that we need a little bit more faith. We need a little bit more belief. And I know many of you guys might feel like with Mars and Saturn that faith is, you know, something that's pretty slim right now, um, but you have to double down on that regardless of your religious or spiritual practice. Um, there is a need to really rely on that because I think that Saturn can actually give a solid foundation. It can give uh, opportunity for rest and recuperation for a very tired Mars. Now at the end of April, we'll see Mars go into Aries. So there's definitely going to be uh, brand new energies. I can't tell you guys the amount of blessings that are coming in May. Okay. I know, I know it seems exhausting right now, even looking at some of the transits in April, but it's going to get a lot better as long as we're kind of willing to do the heavy lifting and the releasing and the letting go. So um, beyond the Sabian symbols and the degrees, you know, something that I think about with the sun conjunct the North Node in Aries is that this is supposed to be highlighting that we have an opportunity for significant growth, self-discovery, and the potential for a profound shift in our life path. So we are just now seeing it. So I see the sun is like a, it's like a, uh, like a hello, like a flashlight. So we're taking the flashlight and we're kind of shining it in the dark and we're like, okay, where are we going? You know? So it's kind of, it's highlighting right now what we're going to be working on for still the better part of the next year. Um, that North node is going to stay in Aries until the beginning of 2025. And then we will see a Saturn Neptune ingress. We're also about to have a solar eclipse in Aries, which is going to be really, really, really active for the first like hundred days. Um, and the immediate next 13 months. But because the eclipse takes about four minutes, we're going to see this play out over the next four years. So see this North Node Sun conjunction as basically a, um, you know, brand new kind of getting a fresh set of eyes and looking at, okay, this is what we're going to be working on for the better part of the next four years. Um, you know, and this transit only occurs when the sun aligns with the North Node. So we have, this is the first time we've had it because last year we saw the Sun North Node conjunction uh, taking place still when the North node was in Taurus. So this is the very first time that this is going to be happening in the sign of Aries, um, with this particular cycle. Now the lunar nodes are always connected to fate of humanity. So even if it, we're not looking at this on a personal level, it's talking about where we are all going, um, in, in a sense of humanity. And, um, you know, Aries can be about the individuals and what they are initiating and the impact that that's going to have on the masses. Now the sun represents our core essence and vitality. And when it conjuncts with the North node, it emphasizes the need to embrace our individuality, assertiveness, and courage. This transit encourages us to step out of our comfort zone and take bold action aligned with our soul's purpose. So we may feel like it's time for us to step away from particular partnerships, affiliations, organizations, or anything that hinders us from being able to get on our individual path. Now, I think right now more than ever, um, you know, people are waking up, they are finding their inner strength. They are really kind of activating these inner, uh, kind of warrior archetypes within. Um, so here's just a few keys, uh, key themes that I kind of wrote down that you may kind of notice over the next couple of days as this particular transit plays out. I think the first thing for me is self-discovery, um, and personal growth, obviously, but discovery, <laughs> I think is more the aspect of, uh, Mercury retrograde, that Mercury is retrograding in the same sign and it still has to kind of come back to this particular degree. It may manifest for some of you guys as being like, I started this new thing and I didn't think I was going to be good at it, but it turns out like I'm capable. Um, everybody's gone through, you know, having to try something new for the first time and you're not going to be good at it immediately. It's going to take some time for you to get the hang of it whether it's a skill or if it's working out or, you know, if it's something that you're training, you know, to do in a professional sense, um, definitely with Mercury retrograde in Aries, I feel like it's about us really having to dig deep and ask ourselves, uh, where am I not taking action? And if I'm afraid to take action, how can I be taking small steps forward to be able to initiate these new habits? 
So the sun's, you know, conjunction to the North node is realizing like, Hey, this is actually pretty fun. Or, you know, I never thought I'd be good at it, but here I am doing this thing. So the transit will really encourage us to explore our true selves and develop a deeper understanding of our unique purpose in life. So look to the house where this is taking place, whichever house Aries is in with the North node, that's where you're kind of learning a little bit more. Now, obviously Aries is connected with uh, courage and assertiveness because Aries energy promotes being ruled by Mars, taking decisive action and standing up for what we believe in. So there can be this sense, like I said, with Mercury retrograde, where we're like, I'm not really sure who I'm becoming, but I know I'm not the same person I was a year ago, you know, or a week ago. Um, but I do believe this is about, you know, for many of us, uh, learning to be more decisive and, you know, Aries is an energy ruled by Mars. So it's linear. It just wants to kind of go, wants to be shot out of a cannon. So the only way we're going to learn, or the only way we're going to know whether or not we're good at something is if we try. <laughs> so a lot of this can be about taking risks, right? And that's the connection of like the sun and, and its association with Leo. Um, if you're not willing to take a risk, you don't get to play the game. That's basically how it works right now. So if you want a relationship, but you're not willing to get your heart broken, you don't get to play the game. If you potentially want to, you know, uh, have a new occupation or, or a new, you know, um, type of job, unless you get out there and you try and you apply, you don't get to play the game. That's basically how this uh, whole month works. And it's like so ironic that it's, you know, starting on April fools and a lot of people are kind of like, just kidding. But there may be that thing like in the back of their mind, that's like, am I kidding? Do I really want to do that? Is that possible? Um, so don't, um, don't discredit yourself, you know, don't cut yourself, don't sell yourself short, don't doubt yourself. A lot of this is being like, okay, let's give it a shot and see what happens. Worst case scenario, you can blame it on Mercury retrograde, or you can say, you know what, I tried it. I changed something up about, you know, my, uh, my routine or, you know, my eating habits, my, my job, my, my whatever. And I decided I don't like it. So I'm going to go back. You are given the green light to do that during a Mercury retrograde because Mercury retrograde is about moving things around and reassessing things and seeing what works and what doesn't work and kind of getting outside of the box. Now, this is also about leadership and independence. Um, obviously, you know, Leo is the king. I got to give you guys your credit. Leo is the king. But the sun is exalted in Aries because this is where we're able to apply that kind of noble um, leadership qualities with the God of war. Okay. So not only is he, you know, noble and regal, but he's not just sitting and hanging out on a throne, right? He's the King that's actually going out and going to battle, which does not happen. Um, so I'm looking to see, you know, what leaders are kind of emerging out in the world right now. Um, you personally may feel like this is encouraging you to take charge of your life and pursue goals with confidence and determination. You just might notice there's more pep in your step and that you're more um, kind of confident about some of the changes that you're making and you're trying to proceed forward in terms of, you know, your future goals in a way where you're uh, very optimistic. Um, and then this is about embracing change, right? That South node, that is our comfort zone. That's like, you know, that, that comfort food we go back to. That's that movie we know that we love. It's that relationship that feels familiar. It's that comfortable spot, you know, that you always go to. Um, so the North node is the opposite of that. It's like, I don't know. I've never been to that restaurant before. I don't know if I'm going to like it. I don't know. I've never considered trying out for, you know, this competition. I don't know if I would be good. Uh, it scares me to potentially meet somebody new. I'm more comfortable in my real, my dysfunctional relationship. So it, it, it's about getting out of your comfort zone. And I think that, you know, Mercury retrograde in Aries is teaching us that if we want change, we must be willing to change our mind. We have to shift our mindset. And through shifting our mindset, we're going to realize we're going to get out of our comfort zone. We're going to do some things that are going to be challenging. We're going to do some things that are going to be stressful. It may be uh, challenging physically, not just mentally, but physically. Um, and we kind of have to get our mind and our body into sequence. So um, embracing change is necessary. It's not just about saying you're going to do something. It's about actively doing it because that's what Aries is about. So it'll bring opportunities and experiences to you over this next week that I think is going to be challenging but very rewarding. And it's going to give you the opportunity to grow and evolve on a very personal level. Now to best work with this energy, um, you don't really have to do much. Honestly, the, the inner, the universe will throw some of these kind of curveballs or I guess fireballs your way, uh, to see if you're going to rise to the occasion. And you may really see them all, all month with an eclipse and a retrograde. Uh, but the best way to work with this consciously, right? Sun and Mercury and Aries, we're learning how to be more self aware. 
um, is to embrace your individuality. Um, take time to reflect on your unique strengths and passions and find ways to express them uh, authentic authentically. So it means that you're not just going to be kind of like repeating, you know, the hive mind chatter. You're going to be thinking for yourself. You're going to be sharing your ideas. You're going to be stepping into the spotlight. You're going to be showing people what you're good at. This also means that we are being asked to cultivate courage uh, because some of us, we don't have a lot of fire energy in our chart. It can be challenging to kind of work with all of this Aries energy. Um, and cultivating courage means that we have to step outside of our comfort zone and we have to take calculated risks that align with our goals and our values. Um, so be brave, get out there and do things that you would not typically do. Try something new. Don't be afraid to fail, right? That's the whole key with this energy. This is also about developing assertiveness. So learning to communicate your needs and desires clearly and confidently. Obviously with Mercury retrograde, everybody's gonna interpret that differently. Some people might go, whoa, where is this new kind of bold assertive person coming from? And I think a lot of us are asking ourselves, like, are we being mean or are we being assertive? And something strange happens when you change your relationship to yourself. It's gonna have a change in the, re the way that you relate to other people. So when you are changing and evolving, other people are going to kind of see that they're going to kind of, it may potentially affect the relationship that you have with them. So it may be challenging because not everybody is going to understand why suddenly you're kind of sticking up for yourself or why suddenly you're like, no, I'm going to go my own way. You know, I don't have to be around my partner all the time, or I don't have to be kind of uh, placating to what other people need, or I'm not going to immediately respond to that email, you know, learning how to be more kind of uh, self-focused. So you're going to have to be assertive and that Mercury retrograde is kind of teaching you how to communicate in ways that um, is assertive, especially because it can be for your own good. It can be for your own health, right? Mercury retrograde over Chiron, where is people pleasing actually hindering the self? Where is it not allowing you to kind of be authentic in your exchanges in your day-to-day -day life where you're putting yourself on back burner because you're afraid of what other people are going to say or how they're going to respond. You're censoring yourself. It's kind of how I see the Mercury retrograde especially with Mars being the ruler in the 12th house conjunct Saturn. It's like, oh, what is everybody going to think? You know, what is my boss going to say? What are my parents going to say? What is my partner going to think? You know, are they, is it all going to end? Are they going to leave me? Is it going to fall apart? And so I think this is that moment where people are really kind of shifting and, and they're realizing that it's so important to practice self-care, uh, prioritize self-care and personal growth. Um, this transit is requiring all of us to invest in our well-being and fully harness its potential. But when I say self-care, I don't mean like face masks and bonbons, although that's fine if that's your form of self-care. Um, certainly everybody's gonna look at self-care differently, but um, you know, health is mercury, right? Chiron is healing, Aries is self. That's so much of what this is about. And for a lot of us, it's the fact that we're not actually taking time to be alone, whether that's meditating, going for a walk, sleeping, working out privately, like whatever, you know, this Mars Saturn energy is actually saying that um, we are not actively getting in touch with ourselves. Now, equally, the other way of looking at this is that through miscommunication, conflict, misunderstandings, uh, being argumentative, combative, right? We are actually alienating ourselves. You know, Chiron felt alienated. He felt separate from society. He felt cast aside. Um, so where, because we are so hung up in our own issues, our own, um, I think, sense of, of feeling um, not secure, I guess our own insecurities, that we may project that onto other people. And that in itself shuts down the opportunity for connection, for growth, for communication. Um, it is going to further divide and isolate us, right, Pisces? Um, and when we think about the North Node, you know, it's also known as Rahu. So it was like, it was a dragon's head, which is so appropriate with the North Node in Aries. Um, and it, it's supposed to represent the direction that we're going in our lifetime. So I think that, you know, it's considered in, in, in this sense, um, you know, shedding a light on, you know, what, what lessons we need to be learning. And Aries is right now. It means we got to do this right now. It's not something we're putting off until next week. Nope, we're doing it right now. So if you find yourself stalling, if you find yourself making excuses, uh, hold yourself accountable. That's another way to work with this energy and be like, no, I gotta do it right now. It's gotta get going right now. Um, because if we take too long, it may be too late for us to be able to kind of, you know, take, take advantage of this uh, astrology. Now, I talked about Mars being the dispositor, right? Dispositor means it's the planet 
that rules the sign. So Mars in Pisces con conjuncting Saturn has an impact on the sun, which can mean um, on a personal level, we're like, man, I'd really love to do this thing, but oh, I just don't want to be seen, you know, or I'm not good enough or I'm not capable enough or I'll never make it. Um, and where our goals can be thwarted by a sense of fear and limitation. Mars is also the uh, connection to the North Node. So it can mean that in order to be able to move in into our destiny, we have to actually be taking action to sleep. We have to rest. We have to meditate. We have to pray, all these Pisces things. The connection to Chiron, where you know uh, subtle subconscious issues or self-undoing is actually impacting our personal wounding, right? I think we're going to hear a lot about how uh, sleep is so important with the Saturn and Pisces cycle. Um, I think that if we're not getting adequate sleep, we can't rest and recharge. If we're constantly stressed out, overworking, running ourselves ragged, we're not going to get enough time to recharge. And there in turn, we're going to have health problems, quite literally. And then Mercury um, and the dispositor being Mars, you know, the, the darker side of that connection is that we're going to start seeing that there's going to be a lot of people who are really struggling with alcoholism, drug addiction, uh, psychological and mental emotional issues because of substances. Um, because Pisces can be about these addictions and it can also be about pharmaceutical uh, abuse. It could also be about where, uh, you know, people are constantly stressed and kind of waiting for the sky to come falling down like Chicken Little. And because of that mental stress with Mercury retrograde and not sleeping and worrying about the state of the world, number one, we're feeding the beast. Doing that is perpetuating that vibration, which in turn is kind of getting, giving the dark side what they want, which is allowing them to feed off of that. When in reality, if this energy is used appropriately, where we're taking time to consciously kind of guard our energy, we're more cautious about who we're interacting with, what we're surrounding ourselves with, and also what we're giving our energy to, um, we, can we can really turn things around. I've found myself saying this a lot over the last week or two with people. I keep telling my clients, I'm like, stop letting people live rent free in your head. Okay. You need to charge them rent. You need to be that, <laughs> you need to be the landlord of that and make sure that you're kind of getting something in exchange because if they're living rent free, you are giving away energy that can be put towards something else, especially things that in, in, in real terms may not matter. If it's in, involving a person that you cannot change a situation, you cannot change be very careful because it's you, we can be quick to fall into feeling powerless with Mars conjunct Saturn. Um, and I think a lot of this is about kind of being like, you know what, out of sight, out of mind. You know, I'm not choosing conflict. I'm not going to argue with people. I want peace. I want to, I want to have really good people around me. And if that means that my choice is to have, you know, a hundred pennies or four quarters, you're going to want four quarters, right? In a sense of friendships and associations. You want people close to you who are going to be improving who you are as a person. And we've all heard the term, you're going to be most like the four or five people you surround yourself with. This is very true right now. Um, so I could see a lot of people kind of reevaluating and looking at their life and going like, how did I get here? You know, why am I living in this small apartment? Or why am I living in this small job? Why am I playing things small? And then start to kind of shift and, and have different goals. And like, that's the beauty of how April is kind of supposed to unfold. Now, um, Mars Saturn. So, you know, this conjunction, I'm going to do a video on this, or you're, this is going to be probably one of the next ones that I'm going to do. Um, but that conjunction is pretty gnarly because it, it's going to be setting up another two year cycle of Mars and Saturn. So if we go back and look at the last one that we had, uh, that I believe was in, what was it? I believe it's in Aquarius. Um, you know, that we saw the beginning of the Ukraine war, you go back two more years, we saw the beginning of COVID when it happened in Pisces. Uh, no, I think maybe that was Aquarius or Capricorn. I'll, I'm going to do a video on it. Don't worry about the cycles. But every two years, this conjunction happens and we see the power of Mars, right? The energy of Mars. And then we see Saturn, which wants to thwart that. It wants to create boundaries and barriers and setbacks and hills for you to climb. So it's going to represent for all of us, hey, this is this energy that we're dealing with in a Pisces way, which is hitting us out of left field. It is exhausting. It seems like, you know, we don't know where it's coming from. It can also represent more conflicts revolving around Pisces things like war on water, naval issues, boats hitting, um, you know, uh, uh, bridges, issues with dams, flooding, like that's the stuff that's going to come up. But in your life, it's going to represent whether or not you're actually practicing some sense of like spiritual defense. You know, if you are clearing your aura, if you are meditating, if you are praying, if you are soaking, if you're clearing, if you're having some kind of faith-based practice. 
because the North Node right now says, hey, that's pretty damn important, right? We have to have something that we are relying on. And I've, got, I've gotten a lot of slack for this, but I really, I don't give a shit. I think a lot of freedom of speech is freedom of worship. These things are the same thing. They cannot coexist without one another. So if people want to worship, that's very Mars, Saturn, and Pisces, that's being limited or things taking, being taken away in correlation or connection to religious holidays. There's, there's a connection here, guys. Saturn is the government. Mars is the individual, right? Because it's the North Node. And it's saying people getting really angry and heated over what's going on with some of these religious kind of debates recently about days being recognized as certain days or about whether or not, you know, government is giving certain recognition to conflicts that are going on in other countries and genocides that are happening. I think about Pisces being peaceful. And I think about the teachings of any real major organized spiritual or religious, I guess, kind of belief system, which is do unto others as you would want to yourself. Treat other people well anyway, right? People may be angry, be kind anyway. People may be nasty and divisive, be kind anyway, right? And it's a, oh, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard thing to do when you have an Aries moon. But I, I think that um, sometimes we just have to learn to basically, you know, choose the, the peaceful path. And in some cases, realizing and recognizing that self-preservation, that self-awareness, that a healthy sense of emotions is more important than getting rock rattled and rolled by other people who, who want conflict, right? And yeah, it's a, it's a hard thing to do right now. A lot of people are gonna be really recognizing and realizing that on, in some ways they've been holding back anger because Mars is conjunct Saturn behind the sun. And in other ways, some people are kind of rising up and they're gonna go, you know what, I'm gonna fight that with a stronger faith, you know, going to church, going to spiritual practice, continuing to, you know, read my scripture, continuing to kind of walk in the faith. And that is what Jesus would want to do. If that's your practice, I'm not saying that, but that's really what the teachings were. So when you think about it, it's like probably the most Christian or Catholic thing you could do if you subscribe to that is keep doing what you're doing. Put your blinders on. Don't worry about other people. Be good anyway. And don't let other people kind of you know, throw, throw you off of your, uh, throw you off of your path. So this conjunction in general is blending the two energies of Mars and Saturn. So it's aligning in the sign of Pisces, blending these two energies, creating a very unique dynamic, um, basically because Mars represents action, energy, and drive, and Saturn represents uh, structure, discipline, and responsibility. We're going to see a fusion of this energy that's going hand in hand with the North Node uh, sun conjunction. So it's saying these are the things that you have to do behind closed doors. You know, some of the, the, the most significant battles people are fighting, you would never know. And I think that's part of this too. That a lot of people may not recognize what people are dealing with in their private life, what struggles they're fighting daily. We never know if somebody is just barely getting to, you know, 10 days sober, or if they're just barely getting by paying their rent, or if they can just barely feed their kids. And I think a lot of us are going to be realizing through this retrograde and this solar eclipse that we're being inherently mean to other people, you know, because we're frustrated ourselves and we're taking it out on other people that may not necessarily deserve it, right? So are we dropping that energy at the door? You know, when you're coming home from work, are you dropping it at the door before you greet your family? Are you dropping it at the door before you, you know, come home and then decide that you're going to either fall apart or you're going to kind of practice and focus on your self-wellness? I think these two planets coming together, you know, in, in a water sign, you know, Pisces, it's very intuitive. So it can also lead to like, because it's a double bodied sign to this push pull dynamic between the desire for action and the need for structure. But this period may bring about a period of intense focus and determination as well as potential frustration and obstacles. The influence of Pisces adds a layer of emotional depth and empathy, and it's, and it's adding like creativity to the mix. So I think some of us can use some of this frustration as motivation. It can be like the gasoline you put in your car to go, to go and initiate new things. I have said to a lot of people in this last month, if you're gonna be alone, what are you doing with that time? If you're finding that you're suddenly out of work, what are you doing with that time? If you're finding that you're finally single after a long time of being in an abusive relationship, what are you doing with your alone time? It can be a scary thing. When suddenly you're being put in a position where you don't have the same limitations that you once had, 
how do you re-identify or you know reintegrate yourself into your life if you have been so heavily attached to certain beliefs, political affiliations, uh, groups, relationships, friendships? It can feel really scary when you're trying to figure out who you are, but Mars and Saturn is saying, do something productive with your alone time. You know, when in doubt, pray, meditate, reflect, and look for that kind of connection to your higher self. And some kind of form of belief will manifest likely from that, which is going to kind of help guide you and figure out what steps you're supposed to take next. Now, how to best work with this energy? Let me see if I can give you guys some good recommendations. Well, um, embrace, embrace discipline and structure. You know, em embrace that. I think that the use of Saturn can create a solid foundation for your goals and your aspirations. Um, I would say channel your energy wisely, you know, focus on one or two projects that are most important to you rather than throwing spaghetti at a wall and seeing what sticks, right? You don't, you don't want to do that. Practice patience. Um, understand that progress may be slower than you'd like, but persistence and determination will pay off in the long run. My favorite thing for this is uh, visualization. I think vis visualization and um, uh, you know also gratitude, appreciation for what I have has really played a huge role into the, the Saturn transit in Pisces so far for me and appreciation for the things that I have and continue to have and continue to kind of manifest and call in, um, especially because the more that I have, the more that I can give back, the more that I can do to help other people, right? So that's kind of how I look at it. Um, stay emotionally connected and, you know, allow the influence of Pisces to help you tap into your intuition and empathy, making your actions more compassionate and more meaningful. Um, but be adaptable and recognize that plans may change, uh, and be willing to adjust your approach as needed. And also I think that this is about sacrifice because Pisces is about sacrifice, right? It's about giving something away and, you know, kind of sometimes where that's necessary to be humble, to be appreciative, you know, to say, I don't know, or can you teach me, you know, or do you want to be my friend? Do you want to, you want to help me? Um, and learning not to let the ego get in the way because certainly, you know, the sun and Aries, uh, it's got a very strong ego, rightfully so. That's kind of the point of why it's, you know, it's exalted, but the sun conjunct the North node can be a sense of, um, you know, needing to pay attention to the ego. The ego is necessary. I'm not saying egos are bad. We, we need to have egos. It's what kind of helps us function out in the world. But those of us who are not really listening and paying attention and being humble and appreciative and, you know, generous with other people, if we're capable, we might have to kind of, you know, get the, the ego in check a little bit. So the pros of this particular aspect um, is that it does have increased focus, determination, and the ability to overcome obstacles. But how do we overcome these obstacles? Getting active, you know, taking action, not complaining about something, doing something. That's really what this is. Um, it's, also, it, it's also really great at encouraging emotional growth and a deeper understanding of our own motivations and desires, right? The cons would be the challenges presented with this transit lead to frustration, feelings of limitation, and potential conflict with other people. And it may require a significant amount of patience and perseverance. So just learn how to say, bless your heart, you know, and just like, let it go, let it ride. Because that's really the only way that we're going to move forward. Otherwise, all that heat, all that fiery energy in Aries could manifest as anger, which could become illness. Um, it could become, um, you know, inflammation. We could have all kinds of issues with rashes and heats and fevers and all kinds of things because we're getting so angry. We're actually doing ourselves a disservice. Um, in terms of world events, you know, when Mars and Saturn conjunct, we see events that require both action and empathy. Um, examples of such events could include global humanitarian efforts, uh, environmental initiatives, and social movements to address systemic issues. And the influence of Pisces may bring attention to spiritual and religious matters as well as artistic and creative endeavors. Uh, don't have a lot of good news in terms of the Mars-Saturn conjunction. I think that when we see that conjunction factored in with the solar eclipse in Aries on the 8th, we will see more issues with uh, boats and attacks or infrastructure issues because that's Saturn. Um, in a way, that might be the theme for the next two years. I really feel like we're going to hear something about flooding and dams um, I also really feel like we're going to hear something about because Jupiter is the dispositor of this conjunction, 
with Jupiter coming into conjunction with Uranus where the earth changing or an earthquake or something shifting with earth that, uh, you know, suddenly we see some kind of flood um, or we see something where because we don't have the proper infrastructure, um, we're seeing things that are flooding over or breaking down or kind of shifting and erupting. Um, as we're coming into Jupiter conjunct Uranus. So that's like, that's very much in the foreground. Um, and yeah, I do think we'll see some type of like humanitarian thing where God forbid there is some kind of crisis, people jumping in and like wanting to help, you know, being like, what can we do to kind of help people and get, and get in there and, and assist? All right, so you'll see this, like I said, starting today, the conjunction itself will not be until uh, the fourth, okay? And so really like the second through the fifth, this is going to be the most active, but know this, this is when you guys are going to start feeling the eclipse. All right. So even though the eclipse has not happened yet, this is when you're going to start feeling it with special attention. Also, when the moon comes into conjunction with Mars in Pisces and when we're in the dark moon right here on the fifth, when moon conjuncts Mars. And look at how many planets the moon has to hit before it gets to the solar eclipse. Moon Mars can be some kind of hidden crisis or conflict. Saturn is going to be some limitation. Neptune is going to be like, please help me. Like, what's going on? And then Venus will hit the moon in the north node right before the solar eclipse. So it's like this one is going to kick very early um, before we actually get into the solar eclipse. So hopefully that's inspiring you guys to be like, okay, I'm stepping into action, you know? We want to be uh, really ready and rearing to go before the eclipse happens or even the retrograde starts kind of getting our goat a little bit. Um, so that way we're prepared and we're able to kind of think on our feet. Now I'd like to take you guys through the 12 rising signs right now. I want to remind you that this is going to be the most prominent for Aries, Sun, Moon, and rising placements. Or if you have anything from 14 to about 16 degrees of Aries, if you have another planet there, it's really important. Um, equally, this really affects Leo because Leo, you are ruled by the sun. So Leo and Leo risings, pay attention to this particular transit. Um, you may feel like it's a little bit more fortuitous for you uh, than other people. And I'll take you guys through the uh, rising sign for the 12 signs. And obviously I will start with Aries. And I like to remind you guys that I'm a Western astrologer. Uh, that is what I practice is tropical astrology predictions seen a lot of people ask me if I do Vedic or side reel. This is uh, Western. Um, and I encourage you guys to listen either for your whole rising sign. I'm going to do whole sign uh, method. Um, or if you use Placidus, you want to see which house is that north node at 15 degrees of Aries in. You might have to listen to another sign. Um, and I would really listen to your sun, moon, and rising especially because you know we're getting ready to come into a lunar eclipse. Listen to your moon sign. You guys might find that that's really helpful, especially because the nodes correlate and they connect to the moon. So that might be a sign that you really want to pay attention to. It might talk to you about what you're feeling emotionally and what's changing for you within your home, your family, all of that stuff. Um, and we'll start with Aries and Aries rising. All right, Aries. So uh, for you, obviously, this is happening in your first house. So all eyes are on you. Um, the sun has connections to your fifth house, which is about taking chances, creativity, self-employment, having fun, gambling, creating children, romance. So the sun conjunct the north node is about you feeling like, I want to do more of these things, right? Um, and it signifies a powerful alignment between your core identity and your life purpose. So this transit encourages you to embrace your individuality and take bold action to fulfill your personal ambitions. So what do you feel like doing? You feel more like playing, creating? Are you thinking about showing an, uh, a talent to the world? Are you learning to be more uh, self-expressive and creative in some way? That's probably how this is gonna be playing out for you um, as an Aries sun, moon, or rising. And I really see this as a time where you have to believe that you can do this. You have to believe that you can do this with that uh, Mars Saturn in the 12th house. And it's about recognizing that old phases of your life are completing, something new is coming in. Um, you may be wanting to bring more attention to you, your body, your appearance, and you're like, okay, in order to do that, I gotta do some work kind of emotionally, spiritually, or behind the scenes. 
the card that I got for you is the Ten of Wands. So, I mean, yeah, obviously Mars in your 12th house, you're like, I'm spent. <laughs> I'm tired. Um, I've been carrying a lot, you know, I'm exhausted. But I, I feel like this is about your body talking to you and it's telling you something and it's trying to tell you, yes, you know, we need rest or yes, you know, we've been through a lot, but you're about to complete something. You're about to be finished. You're almost done. Now is not the time to give up. Now is the time to really believe that you are capable of completing this task. And for many of you guys, I wonder, like, is it relating to movement? Is it relating to to you know, physical ailments and healing the body. For some of you guys, it can be being exhausted, taking care of kids, or having you know, having a baby. That could be something else that can kind of come up with that connection to the fifth house. Um, if not, it's about creating um, or completing personal creative projects and something kind of coming to fruition, and you're wrapping something up. Okay. Good luck, Aries. All eyes are on you. I want to know what's changing for you guys because you're definitely kind of in the spotlight. We've got Taurus and Taurus rising. You're going to be doing this North Node Sun conjunction in your natal 12th house. All right, my Tauruses. So this will be taking place in the 12th house, which is emphasizing the importance of spiritual growth and self-transcendence, compassion, and your life purpose. This transit may bring opportunities to explore your inner world and develop a deeper understanding of your spiritual path. Now the sun rules your, your fourth house of home and family. This may be a time where you are reevaluating where you came from, who you are, your home, your family, your background, your life. Um, there may be some uh, cycle that's completing within your family. There may be some cycle that's completing uh, within your private life. Um, you may be feeling like you need more time for rest or recuperation. Obviously, the solar eclipse that's coming in, you know, it's a new moon for a lot of people. But for you, it's going to feel like you are initiating endings and you're ready for some new beginning. And in order to have that new beginning, you need some space to yourself. You need a room to rest in. You need somewhere to kind of chill for a little bit or create. And there can be something very significant that's changing with one of your parents uh, behind the scenes. And so you're kind of maybe moving through that or you're moving through some old family karma Maybe looking at photos, pictures, things of like a happier time or a time in your life where, you know, you were younger and you had more, you know, freedom and you had more opportunity to kind of like be innocent. And now you're like, I'm coming into this new era where there's more responsibility or there's some kind of change happening on the home front. All right, let's see what the cards say for you. You get the Knight of Cups. So this is um, dreamy right? Creative, intuitive, romantic. This has associations with um, obviously like Pisces, Cancer, and Scorpio. I think about that Mars-Saturn conjunction in your 11th house, and it can mean that you're having to work hard when it comes to your goals. And whether that's with other people, whether that's with a partnership, um, there can be this visualization that's taking place and you're feeling like very creative. So hopefully like this energy in the 12th house is just helping you find like a private space where you can be more creative or you can kind of put something together. Maybe you decide that you want to, you know, paint at home or you want to do something uh, that's going to be more active at home that can be happening with Aries as well. Um, and you're intuitively tapping into like, okay, there's this new phase coming for me. Um, this is what I'm feeling. This is what my dreams are telling me. And you're feeling very inspired in the process. Good luck, Taurus. I've got Gemini and Gemini rising. What's going on, guys? Um, you're going to be doing the sun conjunct the north node in Aries in your natal 11th house. All right, so for you, my Geminis, uh, this is highlighting the importance of community, friendship, and social causes and your life purpose. This transit encourages you to connect with like-minded individuals and work towards making positive changes in the world. So the 11th house is like parties, celebrations, networks, getting together with people, right? Mercury is retrograde in this part of your chart. So you're already doing it. You're joining clubs, you're starting clubs, you're reconnecting with people. Uh, maybe you're connecting with people on the internet. There's something shifting about how you look at your community and your goals within your home and your family. Now the sun has connections to the third house. So it's possible that you're like, we're talking to friends about, you know, where we want to move, where we should be living. Um, maybe we are being more vocal and communicating our goals. 
There can be some kind of get together that you have with neighbors or with siblings or relatives. And you guys are having discussions about what your goals are, where you're going, what you're planning. It can be so fun, so social, but also I think that with Mars's connection in your 10th house conjunct Saturn, this is a lot about team building exercises. This is about networking with people for work and having ways to expand your professional business. Um, this really deals with learning how to be a team leader and being able to direct other people and kind of bringing things together. So even if it's not in regards to your career, you might say, okay, I'm starting like a new community initiative and I'm getting out there and I'm starting these meetings and I like have to feel like I'm like kind of herding cats <laughs> in, in the process, right? Um, and the challenge, but also the uh, beautiful opportunity coming with this Kazemi for you pretty soon to really have your voice heard. And it might be something that needs to be heard within a community uh, kind of you know, uh, endeavor that uh, may start a movement of some kind. All right, I love this. And then you get the Queen of Swords, right? You're like, yeah, that's me riding into, riding, riding into uh, the uh, city hall with my sword and my horse. Um, I mean, this speaks for itself. You know, this is about Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. This is about uh, being extremely intelligent, well-spoken, um, educated, being able to, you know, share what's on your mind, uh, talking about necessary causes, talking about boundaries and responsibilities and instructing other people. So if it's not you, it's somebody who's helping you do it. And you may find that um, you, know, you connect with somebody who can be like-minded, who can kind of help you do that within your community because that's what the sun rules, all right? I like that for you guys. I like that. Uh, let me know, Gemini, what happens. We've got Cancer and Cancer rising. What's up, Cancer? Um, you're going to be doing the sun conjunct the north node in your natal 10th house. So this will be taking place in an angular house. So it's going to feel probably, uh, April feels a little loud for the cardinal signs. So you, you guys are definitely really focusing all this energy um, in, in connection to your reputation, your status, um, who you are out in the world, how people see you, your career, and also, uh, yeah, your, your, your reputation, right? So the Sun conjunct the North Node in the 10th house is focusing on the role um, of career ambition and public image in your life purpose. And the transit is likely to bring opportunities to advance your professional life and make significant impacts in your chosen field. So the Sun represents resources, money, right? And also self-esteem. It's like, I think I can. I know I can. I'm, I am worthy. I am uh, valuable. I am abundant. Um, so knowing that there is some connection between the work that you're doing and the pay that you're getting and feeling like you can do it in a way that feels exciting, it feels creative, and it's allowing you to run the show, right? So this is really wonderful for you. Um, I think about how, you know, the uh, connection to Mars is in your ninth house. So it means that you may actually be working with like a, a mentor or a teacher. There could be training, there could be certification, there might be traveling involved with your work. You might be having to go back to school, getting a degree or a diploma, um, something that's requiring you to level up when it comes to your education or your beliefs in order to kind of like, you know, fall into this position of being a leader. Obviously I talked about how over the next couple of years with the eclipse and then Saturn and Neptune going into Aries, you guys are all having really big career changes, like huge. And some of you guys will be teachers. Some of you guys will be trainers. Some of you guys are going to be coaches. Some of you guys are going to be entrepreneurs because you are pioneering in your 10th house, right? So perhaps maybe this story starts with this realization that's like, in order to get to where I want to go, I have to learn something new or I have to work with somebody who is going to guide me. And so it's possible that that realization kind of comes in and you realize what you want to be doing. The other way of looking at it is there might be an amazing offer. You know, somebody might say with the retrograde, come back and work for me. You know, I, we want to pay you more or, you know, we appreciate you. How, how can we, you know, give you the position that you want and feel fulfilled? Not bad. Pretty good considering Mars and Saturn are meeting in the ninth. The card that I get is the King of Swords. There's the partner, you and Gemini. So this can be talking about you communicating, speaking up. Um, learning how to delegate tasks and like being a better boss or a better leader can also be part of the key here. Um, but this can be about working with another, another air sign. So Libra, Aquarius, Gemini's can kind of come in and they can help you in the process. 
I do feel like this might be about contracts, negotiations. It can be about having a sit down meeting with a boss or an employer and talking about where things are going um, and having a better understanding of what your role is and how you can kind of better direct other people or lead, okay? Good luck, Cancer. Let me know how that goes for you, especially with that eclipse. It's gonna be, it's gonna be big. Now we've got Leo and Leo rising. You'll be experiencing the North Node Sun conjunction in your ninth house. Couple positive things here. Number one, you're ruled by the sun. So this is like that annual kind of like meeting with destiny for you. So it's kind of showing you, hey, go here. You may be one of the signs that see more road signs and you feel a little bit better guided or directed. Um, I also think that because it's in a fellow sister fire sign, if you have anything from 14 to 16 degrees of Leo, it's gonna be trining. So it's gonna feel like it's just in alignment. Like the stars are gonna align and something just moves very quickly for you. Um, for you, Leo, this is taking place in the ninth house. So this is emphasizing the importance of personal growth, education, and exploration in your life purpose. This transit encourages you to broaden your horizons and embrace new experiences that foster your personal development. Ninth house can be places like colleges, institutions, educational centers, airports, foreign countries, uh, some kind of training um, or certification program. I wonder if you're gonna find yourself traveling. I wonder if you're gonna be at an airport or if you're gonna be in another city or another country. I wonder if this is when you become aware or you realize that there is some new goal or you're trying to achieve something higher or there is some sense of enlightenment and some kind of shift in your personal belief about yourself. Now I think about Mars being the ruler or the dispositor of this conjunct Saturn in the eighth. So something is shifting in terms of the way that you look at collaborating with other people, merging of finances, um, there may also be, you know, some, some legal stuff that can come up here. So you're kind of debating whether or not it makes sense to make a sacrifice when it comes to money or resources. If you're somebody who is having to deal with something legal, I think with uh, the North Node Sun, it means you might find somebody who can kind of help represent your cause and help you deal with whatever may be potentially uh, the challenge here where you're feeling like something about your joint resources, taxes and inheritance, inheritance matter. Um, can be kind of handled. And it is kind of indicating that you're having to work harder with partners when it comes to uh, your financial wellness, okay? The card that I get is the three of wands. So I do think some of you guys are gonna be traveling or you're coming or going from a place. Um, three of wands is talking about, you know, picking the direction that you're going in and then going on the adventure, initiating it and starting something brand new that feels exciting. And it can be about traveling alone um, and all of the things that you experience along the way and how it's like teaching you something about yourself. And it can be about announcements. I see this card come up a lot with announcements. You, if you guys can see, he's got the trumpet. Um, and obviously there's a dragon on the trumpet, so it can be saying there is some grand announcement that's getting ready to be made that you might be sharing with other people. That ninth house can be really great for like marketing campaigns. So if you're getting ready to go and like market a new product or something about your business, uh, that may be something else that's kind of popping up during this time. Good luck, Leo. We have Virgo and Virgo rising. You'll be doing the sun conjunct the north node in your needle eighth house. For you guys, this might feel a little intense um, because you have a combination of the eighth house, which is all about depth and connection to others and rebirth and transformation and healing something which can become, uh, that can connect to like death or loss or tragedy. Um, but it can also be about, uh, you know, financial entanglements with other people, uh, emotional entanglements with other people. It's like an eighth house kind of Scorpio vibe. Um, on top of that, the sun rules your 12th house of the deep subconscious, hidden talents, things um, that are more kind of private in nature. And so having the sun connect the north node, it tells me that one phase is ending and another is beginning. Um, so when you see this happen, it's highlighting the importance of transformation, intimacy, and shared, shared resources in your life. This transit may bring opportunities to deepen your understanding of yourself and others, as well as explore the mysteries of life. It is possible, especially with the Mercury retrograde taking place, you're doing a lot of self introspection and you're working with like a therapist or like a trauma specialist and trying to unpack or unravel like, why do I hide away or why do I fear intimacy or, you know, why am I not getting over this thing? And you might have like an epiphany. It can also be um, from the Kazemi, you could see that. Another way of looking at this is it can be a time where it's something very significant. 
um, you know, kind of dies and then, you know, you have some kind of rebirth. So it can be like you're letting go of like a long lost, you know, love or healing a broken heart or finally, you know, letting go and like finishing your grieving process about someone or something that's left your life. And it leaves you feeling very vulnerable, okay? Especially because the dispositor is Mars and Mars is in your relationship sector conjunct Saturn. So likely in order to grow within a relationship, you have to do a lot of digging and you have to look at all of the things within yourself that is holding you back and keeping you from being able to be vulnerable, transparent with another person. That is where the work is being done. The card that I got for you is the Three of Cups, which is really interesting because this is a card of celebration, okay? So it's a card of celebration. So I, I'm also thinking about how like, you know, Mars uh, going through your seventh house, it can bring a lot of action with relationships, but conjuncting Saturn, which is your fifth house Lord, it may mean that you're kind of at the precipice of making a shift from like kind of seeing somebody casually to doing something more serious. And in order to do that, you're having to kind of like, you know, X out other potential, you know, people that you're considering. It can also mean that two people become three. So some kind of growth in a relationship stems from starting a family or having some kind of expansion within your family. Um, but three of cups is a card with celebrating. I just wonder if there's like some third party interference in some relationships and part of like the retrograde and like the Mars Saturn stuff is about being like, okay, I'm finally like choosing a path with a partner and I'm not keeping my options open. And I'm like, Maybe some of that stuff has come up and you're healing it, you know, for some of you, I think that that is possible. And maybe there is just some like soul searching with Mercury in your eighth house. And you're asking yourself, like, why am I constantly seeking other people? Or why am I looking for validation within other people? Or why am I experiencing where I'm attracting partners who are entertaining other people? That, that can definitely be a thing, obviously touch wood, but it's possible when you think about Mercury. Let me know, Gemini, uh, excuse me. Let me know, Virgo, uh, what ends up happening. We've got Libra and Libra rising. You'll be experiencing the sun conjunct the North node in your seventh house. Uh, for you Libras, this is gonna be having you focus on the role of relationships and partnerships and your life purpose. The transit encourages you to cultivate balanced and harmonious connections that support your personal growth and goals. So um, sun conjunct the North node, you know, it can be about a significant meeting um, the sun rules your 11th house of friends. So it doesn't have to be about a romantic relationship per se. It can be. Um, but definitely, I think this is about possibly meeting somebody who can be a really prominent friendship or ally. Um, it can be meeting somebody and joining a group or some kind of network or affiliation. Um, and the seventh house can be about clients. It can be about uh, romantic relationships, partnerships, commitments, business partners, uh, counselors, therapists, right? So you may have a recommendation that comes to a friend that's like, hey, you should talk to this astrologer. You should talk to my therapist or come to this meeting. I'd love you to meet other people. And it's like a chance opportunity to meet significant people. Factor that in with a retrograde in your seventh house where maybe if you've been feeling like you're not uh, socializing a lot with other people, this can give you the opportunity to kind of get back into the swing of things. Um, I think about how Mars is the dispositor and Mars is meeting Saturn in the sixth house. So for some of you guys, it's new counselors, new therapists, new healers. It can be um, people who are helping you with like, you know, the, the kind of the spiritual arts um, who are, you know, kind of practicing other Eastern modalities or other healing modalities. Um, I think about for a lot of, I've seen a lot of Libra risings that are like, I'm separating from my relationships. And so it's interesting because, you know, the North Node, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes it can look really good and then it comes through and then you're like, this is a nightmare. So this can represent with Mars and Saturn being in the sixth house that you're having to do the heavy work and the heavy lifting to really assess and determine, can this relationship be fixed? Um, if you're having problems and you're feeling like relationships are kind of out of balance and you're needing more for, from other people, this can be a time where you're communicating that through the retrograde with a partner and the sun showing up can mean that you bring in like a third party or somebody who could be a mediator or uh, a therapist for a relationship. It may also be a friend that provides some insight in a relationship with this conjunction. Um, it doesn't matter if you're partnered or not with this, with this conjunction and the transit it does make me feel like there is some reassessment with relationships that you are having with other people. So you really wanna pay attention to what happened with the lunar eclipse for you and how it's kind of throwing you back into relationships with other people. And if you're single, I think that it's a time where there can be an invitation to a party or a social gathering 
which in turn can actually help you meet somebody very significant. The card that I get is the high priestess. Okay. So really it's like, what is your gut telling you? You know, when do I see people, you know, meet someone, you know, North node in the seventh house, um, when the seventh house Lord is going in the seventh house, when your first house Lord is in the seventh house, you're kind of having all of these things happening over the next month. You know, Venus is going to enter here in a couple days. Mars will be there at the end of the month. we got a solar eclipse. So I do feel like you guys are getting ready to meet very significant people that are coming into your life. Um, so you're going to have to look at where your natal Mars is to have a better understanding. Um, but definitely, I think it's going to be uh, really significant partnerships that are going to help you grow when it comes to connecting to other people. Good luck. We have Scorpio and Scorpio rising. You guys will be doing the North Node conjunct the Sun and Aries in your natal sixth house. For you, Scorpio, this is taking place in the area that emphasizes the importance of work, service, and personal growth within your life purpose. This transit may bring opportunities to develop your skills and make a meaningful impact in your career or in your community. Sixth house is pets. It's about your coworkers. It's about your office space. It's about your daily routines and your health. Aries is obviously very personal, so it's about your habits and routines. Um, this goes hand in hand with a retrograde and an eclipse, so you already kind of know the themes of what's getting worked out here. But the sun rules your career. It rules your status and how people um, you know, know who you are. So it can be about your skills and how you can better apply your skills, how you can be more productive with your skills, how you can get organized so you're getting more visibility and you're getting more recognition for what you're doing. The sixth house can also be about help and assistance. So like um, it can be about employees, it can be about personal assistance, it can be about people who are helping organize and get things together for your business. So it may be indicating that there is a chance meeting to connect with people that are going to help you get more exposure for what you're doing. Now in the background, Mars is a dispositor and Mars is actually your ruling planet as well. So Mars coming into conjunction with Saturn, I actually feel like because Mars is the faster moving planet, um, it may actually work a little bit better for you. Like I don't think it's gonna hinder you as much. Uh, quite frankly, this is about how you're learning how to really make more time uh, for your creative endeavors, making more time for play, making more time for hobbies, making more time for your own personal business, making more time for romance and dating, making more time for your children. Um, I've seen a lot of Scorpio risings that are like, I have to reorganize something about my, you know, my work schedule because, you know, of my kids and I'm staying home now, or, you know, I'm trying to have a kid or I'm trying to kind of figure out how work is going to revolve around a kid. This is going to be your lesson for the next two years. Um, so if you don't have children, you're not having children, it's about how you're making more time to give life to the things that you love, right? Or the people that you love. Um, and it's going to require some hard work, sacrifice, and dedication. But I think that, you know, because Saturn rules your third house and fourth house, it's about communication within the home and family. It might materialize as rearranging space in your home for your own business um, and learning how to really push yourself to be more creative and self-expressive. Um, and so that way that way you can feel like you're actually doing more to kind of help other people. Um, it'll be interesting to see this kind of manifest because there's been two eclipses that have been conjunct Saturn here in your fifth house. And it's really emphasizing for you, like have more fun, have more pleasure, have a good time. And so I think the sixth house can be saying, how can I do that in a healthier way? You know, how can I have more of a work-life balance or um, how do I have fun without feeling like it has to be, you know, drinking or partying. And so some of you guys are trying to figure out new ways of having fun without feeling like you need to indulge in some of those social pleasures. The card that you get is the strength card, which I love because this has connections to Leo. So that's your 10th house of career. Um, how do people know you Scorpio? People see you as a star because Leo is your 10th house. So it means that people see your creativity. They see your talent. They see your capabilities. Like you shine, people kind of gravitate towards you, right? Cause they see that you carry the sense of strength, resilience, determination, um, but now maybe you're realizing that in order to level up and get to the next phase, you're like, I got to get reorganized. There's something I got to do here. Um, so sometimes part of, you know, this growth means learning how to delegate tasks to other people or knowing when to be like, I need an assistant or I need an accountant or, you know, I need a professional organizer or something to help you kind of expand what you're doing. And so I think this is about remaining open, staying optimistic and willing to kind of bring in the necessary people who can help you 
and not feeling like you have to try to control the outcome. Good luck, Scorpio. As a Scorpio son, I feel that big time. <laughs> All right, we got Sag and Sag rising. What's up, Sag? I'm super excited for this for you, Sagittarius. Um, you've got the sun meeting the north node in the fifth house. Um, so obviously the fifth house is, you know, putting so much emphasis on creativity, self-expression, love, um, and also children or romance. This transit encourages you to embrace your passions and share your unique talents with the world. So it's happening in a fellow fire sign. So if you have anything around 14, 15, 16 degrees of Sagittarius, it'll be making a fire trine to this particular aspect. So it's really working with this like growth and optimism of your ascendant or sun or moon sign. Um, the conjunction here is wonderful because A, the sun's exalted in Aries and B, the sun is at home in the fifth house, right? Because traditionally Leo is connected to the fifth house. So it's bright y'all. Um, in the background, right, the uh, dispositor of all of this is in the fourth house. So it means that you're literally creating from home. That's what you're doing. You're creating from home. Um, it might mean that you're redecorating. It might mean that you're doing, you know, do-it-yourself projects. It might mean that um, you're having to create some, you know, like do-it-yourself projects, or maybe there's some renovations. Um, this can also mean that part of you stepping into your destiny is about children, and it's about how you're building a foundation for, you know, children in your home life or your responsibility and your sacrifice for kids. If not, it might mean that you're needing to literally rearrange or move some things or make some investments into your home so that way you can have your own business, have a craft room, have something creative. Maybe you're working hard to make more kind of like living space so friends and family can come and visit. Um, but it's a, it's a really great aspect for you. I think it's such a nice, it's such a nice break from having, you know, all these heavy Saturn placements in your fourth house. And I know, you know, it's heavy because Mars is still there, but it really shows you like, how can we be finding creative ways to be able to make this happen? Um, the downside of Mars Saturn here is that I do feel like it's saying that you may feel landlocked, limited, on space, on where you're living, on where you feel like you can go to, or you're feeling like you're dealing with a home or family matter. Um, so the sun conjunct the north node is basically saying, if that's how you've been feeling, then we need to integrate more of the ninth house. So the sun rules the ninth house, which is I'm booking a vacation, I'm going somewhere, or I'm learning something about a new creative hobby, or I'm starting something uh, creative that's connected to travel or education. Some of you guys may be starting coaching programs. Some of you guys might be deciding to publish a book. Um, others are deciding that you want to start uh, focusing more on just getting out into the world and exploring and enjoying yourself. And that's going to give you that nice break of what you've been having, kind of feeling stuck at home. The card that I get is the Hermit card. Okay, so this has connections to Mercury and it also has connections to your 10th house. So I think a lot of this is like you learning how to kind of ask yourself, like, do I feel bad having fun? you know, having pleasure, enjoying things. Like, do I feel bad about that? And you're reflecting on that a little bit. Um, yeah, the North Node wants to do a lot of that. And sometimes it can be to its own detriment. So the fifth house can be sex and pleasure and gambling and, and having fun. But really what I think it's saying is that you're learning how to give yourself the freedom to go out and do these things and then still maintain some sense of like responsibility and balance. So you're learning how to do both. Um, and I think the hermit card is saying that you really need to kind of turn within and ask yourself, like, is it time for me to have more fun? Good luck, Sag. We've got Capricorn and Capricorn rising. You're going to be doing the north node conjunct the sun in Aries in your natal fourth house. And with all the other cardinal signs, it might feel, might feel a little active here. Um, for you Capricorn, the fourth house focus on the sun north node conjunction is going to be about home, family, and emotional security and your life's purpose. So this transit is prompting you to create a nurturing and supportive environment that allows you to pursue your goals with confidence. It wants you to have your own space. Okay. So some of you guys are like, okay, I'm moving back home, but I need to have my own room or I'm, you know, finally moving into my own apartment or I'm buying my first house or I'm looking for somewhere to land. Um, that's really what the sun north node conjunction is about. And it can mean that there are some significant changes going on, like big changes within your home, things that might relate to your childhood. Um, there can be some transformations for relatives. Obviously a mercury retrograde here could bring you back home. An eclipse here could bring you back home. 
Um, but this means that it's creating some sense of vulnerability because the sun rules the eighth house, which is about secrets and drama and, uh, you know, airing out laundry and dealing with the karmic or financial ties to other people. So it means that you are through some kind of joint financial matter, transforming your home. Um, for some of you guys, it's dealing with an estate matter or an inheritance matter. For others, it's about, you know, finding ways to uh, get the necessary funds uh, to be able to move or to, you know, get a mortgage on your home or to, you know, make a, uh, an improvement to your home. Um, I think about Mars in the background and that, you know, Mars is a dispositor and it's conjunct Saturn, which is your chart. So you're personally feeling a little attacked um, in the midst of this. So the sun conjunct the north node is like basically saying rather than resisting uh, moving or rather than resisting, um, you know, not having difficult conversations with, with family members or with partners, um, having them and being like, look, you know what, this is my boundary or you know what, I cannot do this any longer. I am finally willing to make the move. Some of you guys are feeling pushed out of your home situation or you're experiencing this with some of your relatives or you're experiencing this with like a roommate. Um, and I think really the sun conjunct the North node here is saying like, be open to changing and transforming the way that you look at what is home. Right. And I would really say that to you guys with Saturn and Neptune coming into your fourth house over these next couple of years, you're going to realize that home is where you are. It's not a specific home. It's not a zip code. It's not a state. It's not a country. It's where you are. And so this process, even though it feels overwhelming and you're like, Ooh, there's a change coming that I don't know if I like it. You're learning that you can be more flexible in the coming years and you can kind of develop your own home base within yourself. Right now, you're having to learn to be flexible. And there are going to be some challenges and setbacks when it comes to these home matters, but it's teaching you that you're strong. The card that I get is the Two of Swords, which means you're still indecisive about the situation. You're like, I don't know if it's for the best. Is it for the best? Is it not? Should I be doing this or not? Do not overthink. The worst thing you could do with a Mercury retrograde in Aries is overthink something. Because if you think about something too long, you're gonna talk yourself out of something. That when in reality, all these planets are coming into contact with the North Node. It's saying, don't think, just do. And many of you guys need to have those difficult conversations or you need to break your lease or you need to move or you need to you know, have it out with a sibling and be like, enough is enough. That's what's gonna happen. So if you sit on this too long, be mindful that you're gonna miss your opportunity to see, actually, this can be a good thing. This, ch this change can be a good thing. And it, it, I think it's going to give you some sense of freedom down the road that you never realized that you really needed. Good luck. We've got Aquarius and Aquarius rising. What's up, guys? Uh, you're going to be doing the North Node conjunct the Sun in the third house in Aries. Okay, so that'll be taking place in your third house. Um, so for you guys, this is all about, let's pull this up here. Okay. Uh, emphasizing the importance of communication and self-expression and that being a part of your life's purpose. So this transit encourages you to share your ideas and thoughts with others, fostering personal growth and connections. So the third house is things like writing, speaking, communicating contracts, cars, um, and Aries is personal. So it's, how do I think? What do I have to say? What am I writing? What am I learning? And this can be about your relationship to your community. This can be about your relationship to siblings. It can be about how you write your social media. It can be about a podcast or a YouTube channel or anything like that. Um, and it's connected to the sun. Okay. So the sun is about relationships. So the North Node conjunct the sun means you're having important conversations with other people about what you think. Okay. And I know some of you guys are like, I'm giving them a piece of my mind. I don't blame you. Um, I think that with Mars coming into conjunction with Saturn, because Mars is the dispositor here, like I said to Capricorn and I will tell Pisces, you're feeling a little attacked uh, because Mars is the faster moving planet. So it kind of means that you may be finding that you're having difficult or challenging conversations with people about your values, okay? About where you spend your money, about how you spend your money, what you believe in. Um, you may feel like you need to stand up to other people and kind of defend yourself and talk about your belief systems and like really focus on integrity with Mars and Saturn in the second house. Mars also has connections to uh, your professional life. So I could see that there is a sense of speaking up and being like, 
you're gonna pay me, or why haven't you paid me, or this is what I can and cannot afford, or this is not is not working for me. In the midst of the retrograde, you have the opportunity to be persuasive, to be uh, in a position of negotiating something or smoothing something over or trying to kind of make a deal. Watch for important conversations that you may have with your children, because that's Leo, with married marital partners, because that's the seventh house, or with siblings or neighbors. I know I'm throwing like a whole bunch of different people at you, but that's kind of what the third house is. Um, and see the opportunity to sit down and write, to sit down and journal, um, take a walk, get active, you know, really think about your thoughts. If you're feeling like there's an important conversation you need to have, you may have a day of feeling very inspired. I don't think it's just going to be this. I also think it'll be the Kazemi that's going to happen after the eclipse where there's like this epiphany and like, you know exactly what to write, or you have this great idea for like a new website or a way to make money. Um, by, you know, giving people information and it can be, you know, you're teaching people about fitness or you're teaching people about finances or you're teaching people about, you know, writing. And, um, I think that you're just learning to kind of get more into the flow of this and like how to better connect and communicate with your audience, um, and have better, more, I think, fulfilling conversations personally. The card that I got for you is the three of swords. Okay. Not surprised. Swords can definitely be Mars. Uh, in the water sign of Pisces, it can be about hurt feelings. And with Mars coming into conjunction with Saturn, it's possible that you're either working through something where your feelings have been hurt and you're like trying to figure out how to express this to somebody and talk to somebody about something that might feel very sensitive to you. Or it may be a situation where you're kind of like, you know, getting some feedback from somebody that they're like, hey, you said this thing and it kind of like put me off or it upset me and I was offended. And it's about you deciding whether or not you're gonna show up and if you're gonna fight fire with fire or you know, with the Mercury retrograde and the sun you know, in the third house, that there is some sense of humility and being like, hey, I'm sorry that I projected that onto you or I'm sorry that you know, we had such a heated discussion. It's just, I feel very strongly about things. And it's about being able to kind of mend something in communication and actually talk about the experience that you've had and be able to kind of give more insight into your feelings so you can heal the wound, okay? Definitely a difficult card for you, Aquarius. Hang in there. And we've got Pisces and Pisces rising. Uh, you guys are gonna be doing the North Node conjunct the sun in your natal second house, okay? So for you guys, um, this is highlighting the need to align your values and your resources with your life purpose. The transit may bring opportunities to develop your self-worth and financial stability while you're pursuing your passions. So the second house is all about money, resources, what you have in your wallet or in your purse, what things you collect or possess, but it's also about your self-esteem, how you feel about yourself. Now the sun in the second house is important to really uh, focus on, okay, you know, what do I personally possess? I think within yourself, not necessarily physical goods because it's Aries. Um, and we see that connection to the North Node. This is all ruled by Saturn, okay? Excuse me, this is all ruled by Mars, which is conjuncting Saturn, um, which makes me feel like you are learning to let go of insecurities, where you are beating yourself up, where you are being too hard on yourself. Um, you know, Mars, Saturn in the first house can say that this is a two year cycle that's kind of brewing. That's about where you're holding yourself back, where you're mean to yourself and you're not kind to, enough to yourself. You know, second house means that you have to uh, believe in yourself. You have to invest in yourself. You have to build slowly but steadily forward. And with the, you know, Saturn conjunction, it might mean that you have thoughts or, per, you know, ways of perceiving yourself that is not in alignment with reality. And it may not be how other people see you. Um, the sun is connected to the sixth house, which is about health and purpose and daily routine. So I think the North node conjunct the sun can indicate that you're like, this is what I need to be doing on a regular basis. This is what I need to be eating. This is how I need to be kind of budgeting my money. This is how I need to be investing my time. Maybe you're investing your time in creative habits. Maybe you're investing your time in, you know, better health or fitness or diet. That can be Aries, second house. Um, it might also mean that you're deciding that you want to make money in a new way and that you're willing to take a new job or there is some job opportunity that presents itself and you're questioning whether or not, hey, can I do that? Is that possible? Solar eclipse, north node, and a retrograde all in your second house is about reevaluating what old things you want to let go of and bringing in new opportunities to become 
entrepreneurial and pioneering. I think this is about where you need to have like a can-do attitude and be like, I'm gonna do it myself and I'm gonna find a way forward um, and not feel that you are you know, being held back because you can feel that way, but I think it's really within yourself. Look at healthier habits when it comes to self-esteem and how you talk to yourself. Look at healthier habits when it comes to how you're budgeting your money and how you're spending things and where you're investing it. The Mercury retrograde, I think, can be about people paying you back or, or finding ways to kind of come back to you and help boost your self-esteem. Um, but for many of you guys, a solar eclipse coming up here, Venus coming through here, like this is a major financial growth period, M major. And this may be when you start kind of realizing, okay, there is a job connection or I, I am going to be working on this thing. Okay, great. You know, or I do have a call back um, where I'm going to be starting something new. And if you're solid in your career right now, then it's gonna materialize more as self-esteem and like building your own personal resources and finding that the money that's coming in, you're doing something different with it. The card that I get for you is the world card. So it's completion of something, completion of karma, fulfillment, bringing in everything that you've worked so hard for. Um, such great transits for you to be having in your second house Pisces. It's not just about renewed self-esteem, it's also about all of the things that you feel like you've been making sacrifices are gonna, it's gonna prove, you know, worthwhile. It was worth your time. All the hard work, you know, the endless nights, the giving things up, the having to kind of be alone and being super focused. Now you're gonna start seeing the results and all of like the fruit of your labor that's gonna be coming in. Good for you, Pisces. Well guys, I hope that's helpful. I hope that inspires you to really open your eyes and pay attention to these next couple of days. Uh, something, some kind of opportunity, some kind of golden opportunity is being presented to us. All we have to be doing is being willing to uh, step up to the bat, step up to bat, and uh, you know, take take the opportunity. Let me know. Leave me your comments below. Um, I'd love to hear where this is happening for you, your thoughts, and if you resonate with these predictions. I always appreciate your guys's comments. I can't always get back to all of them, but I see them and I try to like them. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Any interaction with my page really helps this page grow. I'm trying to reach my goal of 50,000 subscribers this year, so you guys are definitely helping me kind of make that happen, so let's kind of keep that momentum going. If you guys like my content, consider checking out my website at beyondtheveiltarot.com. I am a full-time um, astrologer. I see clients privately, and I also teach astrology and tarot. You can find my beginner's courses online under the course tab. You can also check out my availability. I'm taking clients now in July and August of 2024. Check out my personalized calendars and all the other extras in the links below this description. Um, I hope this is helpful for you guys and I'll catch you guys all back here on Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your week. Take care.